Hi, Andrea Waddell here. Welcome to the studio. Today's video is going to be um, about me working to resolve these two abstracts and getting them to a place that feels um, more resolved and closer to a body of work that I'm working on uh, for a show that I'm going to be doing. And the second part of this video, what I'm really going to talk about too, is the state of mind that you need to be in in order to do your best work. It's not something I've talked about that much on this channel, but it is very, very important. So if you haven't subscribed already to this channel, go ahead and do that. If you're interested in um, taking a class with me, head on over to my website and you can find out about all the things I'm doing, some live classes, one in Santa Barbara coming up end of May. Um, my South of France retreat is full, but I'll be doing it again in 2025. Okay, let's get to it. doing my online class, um, The Fundamentals of Abstract Composition, and I got them to as far as I could get them in that kind of performance mode that I was in when I was filming myself and I was trying to demonstrate shapes and lines and um, space and color and contrast. But the fact of the matter is, I don't really like them. They aren't resolved. They don't really resemble any of my other work. So whenever something like that happens, I always want to take an opportunity to step back and step back into it and start working with it and start trying to bring these into fruition and towards um, a coherent body of work. Um, because having a coherent body of work is if you're showing work or if you're you know want to approach galleries you do need to have consistency in your style and you know it takes some time to get there so that's what i'm working on i do have a show coming up so i'm going to take these two as demonstration pieces to pull them out of their current state and get them into you know something that is kind of more along this line so this abstraction that I did in oil and cold wax and it's the only one that I ever did where I was able to collage very thick paper directly onto the cold wax medium I don't know how I did it but it's really not something that works so if you're going to use collage which is what I'm going to do for these two it needs to go on to an acrylic base but this did wind up working out and I like what happened here, I took, um, I took sort of a, a painting on paper that was completely resolved and I just glued it right onto the surface and then I wanted it to be strategically placed um, as a focal point and then I've got this 80% one kind of color thing and then this little 20% down here which is a composition um, kind of format that works pretty well. But in order to get this paper to stick here and to glue down, I used so much glue and I had really, really heavy books on it for like three months and it's glued down. So, you know, that's not a solution. You can't do that directly onto your cold wax. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to collage some elements down on these two to start to bring a little bit more um, sophistication or something just, just, you know, more depth, more nuance, and um, kind of stimulate me to have more interest to want to start working on these things, which is a really important piece of it. If you're not interested and you're getting a little bored and you're not really, you know, you're not having an emotional response to what you're working on, then you're off track. And my experience doing these, because it was performative and I was being filmed and it was timed and I need to finish it, um, I can see that. I can see sort of the tension in the work and I can see that it is, you know, um, there isn't my uh, voice isn't in it. It was more 
of a demonstration. So I guess my point is, be very aware of the state of mind um, that you're in when you are at your best. And for me, to be at my best means I want to be at my best, I want to be rested, I want my head to be clear, maybe I've med meditated, and most importantly, I'm excited to play. So I'm at that place now because I've understood that I'm going to bring these into something, this is my first impulse, that is along these lines so that it fits in with the rest of my work. And because the opportunity to do that is here, because these are acrylics on canvas, I can, I can go ahead and do that. So what I've done is uh, I have these little pieces that I did in cold wax. There's this one, there's this one, there's this one, and there's this one. And I'm going to work with these. I'm going to start collaging some of these in. I might even do what I did Whoa! for this painting. It was, I had a series of kind of these things like this, gray florals. So I might do that and sacrifice that and put that there. I haven't decided yet. I already like what that's doing. If I start placing that there, because basically the only part of this painting I like is this. And the only part, I don't really like any part of this painting over here. So, okay. My goal is to be not to trip on that. So I'm going to be working with these are all cold wax on paper, gluing those in. And essentially the rest of what I'm going to do is I'm going to use all of my r and pigment sticks here. I have a great big beautiful selection and I'm just going to work up these layers with my r and pigment sticks and um, play, see where I go. So another thing that you can do. Let's say you've gotten to a place and you're looking at your painting, like let's say this one, and you're trying to figure out, well, what would make sense for color? This is a pretty good color wheel, and it could be that if we looked at this, that painting is essentially these colors here, but what I could do is use this to find maybe a couple of interesting accents. So, you know, if it's all kind of mostly these greens, I could throw in a purple element, and I have a purple element right here. So what happens if I place this kind of strategically, and what I'm thinking would be something, a good strategic spot would be, I need bigger, I need this. So let's say this angle, sort of, if I'm looking at this angle, this sort of axis here, kind of like this, a spot right here, like between here and here, is a kind of a classical positioning. So what happens if I place that right there, approximately? And then I step back from it. That already starts to add a lot of interest. It's a lot better already. First of all, it's a lot better because it's got, you know, a lot of, it's got a big value contrast. Whereas here, the problem with this painting, I was so trying to rush to get it done. And when I pulled it off, I could see all the classical mistakes that I'm always telling people to not do is here's a shape, here's a shape, here's a shape. They're all three the same size. And then here's a shape, and then here's a shape, and then plus these shapes are squares. And um, you know, it's really not it's it's not that meaningful and it's not working because we don't want this level of repetition. Same size, same size, same size, same size. So if I do my little thing here and I break this up and I decide this becomes a focal point, that already clears up quite a lot. Maybe a little higher. A little higher. 
which is using collage like this really is a lot of fun. My particular trick is use my own Resolve little pieces to add just a little bit of you know decorative interest. So I'm going to use these. My other idea for this, I really like this one too, but I can't find a place for it. You know, this may be as I'm continuing to work, it can come up here. But you see, if I put this here, how this immediately takes away from this one, because it repeats, bang, bang. So that's, I'm gonna, you know, not do that. I think I need a little water. So I'm taking my Yes Glue, and I'm gonna put it, in order to do this collage, I'm gonna put it on the back of the paper. I'm just using a palette knife that I outlined. I'm going to put some glue here too. And I can see my internal state is I want to play. And that's the place to be to, to create really good work. Is I'm, I'm motivated. I'm psyched. It's not, I'm not looking at this as, oh God. These are unresolved. What a chore. It's like, oh, what a great opportunity um, to work on old work that's not, that, you know, that was a demo piece, essentially. And it's rare that you can do a demo piece that turns into real, you know, work. Because there's, you know, there's a lot of that happens in private moments. It's your own conversation with yourself, really. Uh, but I'm excited because... I've, I'm going to give myself something to talk about. It was this way. Yeah. There we go. All right. So that'll hold for this painting session. And then afterwards, it's going to get some books. For the other one, it's going to be the same idea. It's going to be trying to find a way to integrate um, this collage element into the rest of it. But what I'm going to do is first, I'm going to start by just maybe putting an all-over color on this and harmonizing it, and um, maybe just a transparent. I will use maybe my transparent, a series of transparents, because I was thinking about desaturating those colors and just sticking with them, but I think that what I would rather do is just um, get a, a transparent glaze across all of it. And that way, that'll be a wrap for today. Big collage is very, very um, tricky. You have to make it, basically when you put a collage element down, you've made a commitment. It's, it's a, it is an integral piece of your composition and your texture and your color and the story. And so you have to work with it for the rest of the painting. So there's something about that that is both a really fun challenge um, and, and difficult. I have many, many times put collage elements down and only to just rip them up. But a couple of times, like in that painting, I've done it. It's worked really well because it's the central theme um, of the painting. Like everything is about that collage element. This is a transparent. It's an Italian pink. I think if I just put my Italian pink all over. All over. I'm going to have another couple of transparent colors just to mask some of this green and unify. So again, I'm, I'm working with RNF pigment sticks, oil over acrylic. So I'm brushing in my RNF pigment stick.
integrating the collage by bringing some of the col color of the collage back down into the canvas so that it's not quite so obvious that it's a collage element. Brushing it in. Getting that gorgeous purple tone. And then I'm still working with RNF pigment sticks, and I chose um, a cool yellow to contrast with the warms, which is a fun thing to do is contrast cool yellows and sort of acid yellows when you've got a lot of warm yellows. And it made that kind of shape glow. But now that shape is glowing and it's out of balance with the, the big purple, beautiful purple shape. But I'll wind up seeing that and we'll address it. And now I've got an RNF pigment stick. I'm pulling that in. I'm following the lines from the collage, integrating that into the rest of my um, abstract design here and then I'll come in and I'll pull in lines from the other side of the collage and just make a bold move across the canvas and just let my arm just flow and keeping that kind of loose and then that purple color even though it's so beautiful it's dominating it's it's too much of it and so it's one of those things i i could have fallen in love with it but it's it's taking away from the collage and so bringing in working wet on wet using this blue uh right over the dioxide purple gave me this really beautiful blend which is something that's so cool to work with with these RNF pigment sticks, the way you can brush them in or mark make them in, it's pretty cool. And that might just be a, a wrap for today. I'm going to let that dry um, and then um, give myself some time, which I encourage all of you to do when you're painting is if you're right on top of the work, on top of the work, on top of the work, at some point you can't see it, you're really responding viscerally and intuitively. And so it's when you step back, um, even for a day, and you come back in, pay attention to instantly what you see, because it's usually in that instant moment that you can see, you've depolarized enough and you can see what the painting needs. Um, and is it, in my case, going along in this kind of direction and how am I doing as I integrate collage into the work. I let it sit over maybe a couple of days and then I came in and I started working up just intuitively more colors. And the first thing that I noticed was that the format was too small. It didn't work for me. It was too tight. So I had a canvas exactly the same size. I put more collage elements in that one so that there was sort of more space to work with. And I um, worked those up with the RNF pigment sticks, my beautiful collection here. And did a lot of exploring with color and muted tones and tints and bright shapes and um, mark making with those fabulous sticks and looking for textural differences, rhythmic differences, value shifts, brights next to darker colors, using some of that mark making, um, the, t the ability to do that to create this sort of strong um, energy with those sticks and then some interesting contrasts. And so that's what I, where I got to, and I like it a lot better than where it was when I started with it.